Mario, welcome back. Welcome back to you, Ben. I'm glad we're here again for our second movie of the night. Our second movie of the night. Uh, we're going to be here. Uh, we were here last Monday and then for the next three Mondays right through Right through Halloween. Right through Halloween. I love five Mondays with you. If it's the only time I can see you, I'll take Monday nights. So we have Brian De Palma's 1976 film Obsession, Cliff Robertson, John Lithgow, and we've been told that we have been saying what I said, Genevieve Bougeau. Genevieve, it's Genevieve. Genevieve Bougeau. Yeah, well, you know, Genevieve, Genevieve, eh. Do you think she's going to call us and go, you said my name wrong, you bastard. I don't think so. Certainly not going to say it like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so why did you pick Obsession? And then what do you what do you love about uh, well, De Palma? I, you know, look, De Palma was also obviously heavily, heavily influenced by Hitchcock. And last year we did the same thing. I love doing a De Palma and a Hitchcock because I think that they mirror each other. What I love about De Palma is he is... Like Hitchcock, he's not afraid to be big. And I love the way he uses the score in this movie. It's Bernard Herrmann's second to last. Herman loved his score. He was very he, proud of his score. He, he his, said yeah. it's his favorite yeah, film favorite that he score. ever scored. Yeah. Paul Schrader wrote the screenplay. And originally it was much longer. Had a whole other act yeah. set 10 years after the events that take place in the film. Herman was the one that said to him, you don't need this, get rid of it. Yeah, because he couldn't figure out how to score it. He was like, Is, you're, I think the movie's done. I, so he must have been looking at the screenplay when he was thinking about scoring it, and because they never filmed it. Um, but I think it's amazing that he had such an influence on this film. Have you read it by any chance? It's available. I read the it's, full screenplay. You can find it. It's on the Blu-ray, I think. Oh, right. The screenplay's on Blu-ray. I, I love a Blu-ray, yeah. and I just bought it. Um, but yeah. you can, uh, yeah, you can find it uh, online. And, you know, uh, look, Paul Schrader is as, as good a writer Great. As, as there is, and a terrific director uh, as well. And he was angry that they took this part out. But it, it feels like uh, uh, enough. It is enough. To me. Yeah. I think so, too. But, I think they made the right decision. Yeah, I mean, it I, probably would have been good if they'd shot it also. Yeah. But, 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 but it, uh, you don't feel... I don't feel, you don't see this and think, oh man, something's missing. No, you don't. If anything, yeah. there's a lot. Genevieve is very good and she's just beautiful in this. She's like Audrey Hepburn beautiful. And I happen to like Cliff Robertson in this a lot. I know De Palma was not completely happy with him, but I think he's quite good in this. And Lithgow is just magnificent in everything. Food, money, and above all, art, my man. I'm a lover of fine art. Do you know him? You must know him. I've met him yeah. quite a few times, and he's done a lot of Broadway, so I've come in contact with him in those circles. He's a lovely guy. He's always playing a villain. And very capable of playing a good guy and playing a bad oh, guy, so you never know quite uh, what to do. Yep, with and playing twins like he did in Raising Cain, another Brian De Palma film. Brian, he had a great relationship with him. And, of course, uh, uh, Blowout. Oh, and Blowout, which we showed last year, which That's is right. probably my favorite De Palma film. This one, though, is a lot of silence in this film and just music and it's almost like an opera at times it's just it's it's very big and lush i i and and the, the cinematographer um Vilmo this, sigmund. Vilmo sigmund that guy he, every shot in this movie is beautiful as larry king would say professional Pro oh. professional yeah. gosh i'm glad that we picked this one i don't think it's seen enough i think it's but it was also de palma's first big hit First big hit. I mean, he'd, he'd sort of burst onto the scene and then the studio, uh, the, the Tommy Smothers uh, uh, movie that he did, the studio took it away from him. And 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 he then was this big, as, as much an anti-studio guy as there was. This was sort of his return to mainstream filmmaking, 1976, same year as Carrie. So his yes, year for DePaul. Yes, it, I love Carrie. But the, when the studio released this, they didn't think it was going to do that well. And it got pretty good reviews and people went to see this movie it, it it made money it did well and it's um it's impressive it's brilliant a lot of spoilers here so we should watch the movie and then we'll come back and we'll we'll talk more afterwards absolutely there's so much more you can say about it after you've seen it that's what i just said oh that's right well i was translating <laughs> i said it very clearly you did but i still like to repeat myself i'm italian we repeat ourselves and we repeat Stop other people Stop talking. So. From 1976, Cliff Robertson, John Lithgow, and Geneviève Bougeau in Brian De Palma's Obsession. <sighs> Back, Ben Mankiewicz, Mario Cantone, Obsession. We wanted to, to get to the movie because there's so much to talk about. I mean, even the way he shoots their reunion, I mean, he shoots it like a romance, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. with the camera the swirling, camera swirling around. around them. It's yeah. so disturbing. Yeah. And they really tried to pull back on the incestuous stuff, even though it's certainly there. But 
Um, right, they turned the marriage into a dream sequence. The wedding. That was the, yeah. the wedding. Yeah, the wedding, yeah. the wedding into a dream sequence. It was sequence. shot, and then they said, well, we have the shot of him sleeping. Let's just, you know, right. do the waves so it's a dream, so it's less kind of... But come on, they, they were together. They were right. dating. You didn't see them ever kiss on the mouth or maybe hug, kiss on the cheek, but that's it. And, I mean, good, because it's disturbing enough, but you know that right. he had to... Slap with his daughter. And she's, you know. There, I said it. And she's with the daddy. And then, yeah, it's. Uh, the ending, she just keeps saying daddy. Yeah. But he, one thing I, I, I do, so I know that De Palma <laughs> knocked, he didn't think Robertson was the right actor for yeah. this, right? That there wasn't enough range in his face, right? That, that uh, and, but I, I think we get a lot of it in the end because he goes through like, 15 different emotions as he tries to piece together how what's he's happened. feeling and then and what... coming and realizing it's his daughter and then thinks, yeah, but then sort of we think ends in a, in a good place. I mean, I hope I'm sure I'm, 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 I'm inferring. Well, I'm I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, if they, because he, okay, great, together, he didn't know, but she knew. She knew. She knew the whole time. Right. She knew. But maybe that's why she, maybe that's the reason why they didn't get together physically. Don't you think there was a better way for John Lithgow to go about getting what he wanted from Yeah, his... I mean, that took 15 years. 15 really? Years. That's an, it's like, this is the biggest investment I've ever, yeah, 15 years. Yeah, and it was all dependent on switching a briefcase. Like, yeah. well, don't look over there. So yeah. you got to sign one more thing <laughs> now. Yeah. Uh, and as you mentioned before we started here, you know, the, we know it's let's you go. know right away he's twirling his, he's mustache. Twirling his mustache oh right. gosh yeah. and the way de palma shoots him like it's pretty there's no great surprise when it turns out that the villain is john lithgow no there is no surprise at all but um it's it's a great movie and like i said that score is gorgeous it's just beautiful and he wasn't afraid to use operatic kind of big lush orchestrations and you have Bernard Herman, so you better not waste it. Right here, as you said, the penultimate film for Herman, and I think the last one that he saw completed. He did Taxi Driver, but nice. but he died before yeah. a Taxi Driver came out. He had great taste in the directors he chose to work for, mm -hmm. and the last two were De Palma and Scorsese. So I mean, he, he knew what he was doing, right. and these both were, both movies, by the way, written by by the great by Paul, Paul Schrader, Schrader. Yeah. yeah, who kind of removed himself from the movie. He had the whole third act of the movie because the movie's supposed to after that moment in the airport, then we go forward nine years. Herman was like, no, man. No. And, and De Palma thought the same thing, but uh, Schrader got mad. Yeah, well, you know, writers uh, want to hold on to their, their stuff. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, right. tough. it's tough for an, a, a great writer to edit, and he's a great, great writer, Paul Schrader. Hopefully, you know, you and I will, will do this uh, every October where you come in and, and find some, some creepy movies for us oh, to, to run. But you could have a, like last year we had... Uh, what was the De Palma movie we had last year? Blowout. We had uh, we had uh, a blowout last year, but I mean, we could, I mean, Dress to Kill. Oh, Dress to Kill. Harry. Harry. Yeah. I, I think he's great. And I and I love Dress to Kill, too. Maybe next year we'll, we'll show that. Mario, great stuff. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ben. I had a lovely night. And you will be back uh, next week. Oh, I'm, I will. I'm looking forward to it. You are looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. Mario may be done for the night, but we're not. More creepy cinema is ahead. John Carpenter's The Fog. <laughs> The fog. The fog. Well, I'll be disappearing into the fog, but this is, this is on you. And Adrian Barbeau <laughs> is next on TCM.